Hey guys, before we hop into today's podcast, I wanted to give you a heads up that on April 6th, we're gonna be running another four day trading workshop. For you guys that have been to these events before, you know they are fantastic. It's a massive amount of knowledge meant for all levels of traders, starting at the very basics to the experience. And if you haven't attended one already, make sure you do so as I guaranteed, you're gonna learn more in these four days than you have thus far venturing around the internet looking for answers. This workshop is totally free. It is 100% online, so you don't have to buy any plane tickets or anything like that. You just have to register and show up, and I'll have details out to you uh, when they are made available. All right, let's hop into today's episode on do winning strategies have to be complex. got on the trading coach podcast facebook group and the question says this hey says hi all hope everyone is doing great i recently got into a conversation with a trader who had an interesting point of view in regards of the markets his original post stated if your strategy is very simple why should it work if it was easy to grasp and implement why wouldn't everyone be doing it And if everyone was doing it, why would it still be profitable? Your strategy needs to have something separating it from others. Otherwise, more people will start using it and your edge disappears. The trader then went on to explain that hedge funds are no longer using technical analysis, uh, reading price action, and they have moved on to more sophisticated algorithms. What do you think about this approach? Do winning strategies have to be complicated and complex? And how do you stop other people from using your strategy? Go. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? This is why this, this is one of the reasons I, I started the group in the first place was to have, you know, we we have these interesting conversations, obviously, here on the tier one trading platform. But um, we have a lot of the, the content that Jason and myself produce. It sparks interesting conversations out out uh outside as well and i want to give a place aside from like just our dms or something like that to really have these conversations that either you know that educate and inform and 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 you know really help people along their path but i'd love to hear what you guys think i I consider you guys a sophisticated group of traders uh typically with probably more knowledge than your average trader out there. And that's just because you've been in the right situation around the right type of people for so long. Um, I thought it'd be good to hear what you guys think. Darren said, I heard someone say trading is simple, but not easy. I've heard that before, Darren. Probably someone very, very smart. Lat says, uh, nothing wrong with it being simple. And simple is relative. That is true. Yeah, simple is a relative term, kind of like the, you know, enough sleep we talked about yesterday simple is relative to everyone but he does have a point of if everyone picks it up it can deteriorate uh steven says great question i think he has a point here i don't think it's simple it's more complicated than we think see drew typing in as well look at that get the brain working already early monday or early monday early morning for me not for some of you guys some of you guys afternoon But let me give Drew a chance to type in and then I'll kind of go on my, not rant, but share my opinion. Very similar to what you guys have been speaking of already. Drew says, if more people trade the same strategy as you, does that not count as more volume in orders for your direction? Yes and no. Um, And that's kind of the, the, and we have to deal with extreme amounts. Um, uh, Steven says, but what do I know? I'm still on my journey. You can, you can know plenty. We're all still on our journey. Here's a, here's a secret. The journey never ends. <laughs> well, I mean, it ends at a point when, you know, we're deceased. But aside from that, the journey never ends. And some may say that another journey begins after that, the next journey. Um, but I agree um, that I, I definitely agree trading is simple. Uh, trading doesn't have to be overcomplicated. It can. 
Um, someone can make trading very complement. Real quick, we says, any strategy can be simple and easy to implement, but not everyone can trade it consistently and be profitable. They might switch to another very soon. And I think that's a, that's a, a, a great point to realize as well. I think before we even get involved in this conversation, it's, I'm going to say this in the most, uh, it's probably going to seem very blunt and, and maybe arrogant and, and bad, but most traders suck. Just the cold, hard truth. And, and I can say that because I sucked for a very, very long time as well. Many of you have sucked for a very, very long time as well. The fact of the matter is most traders suck, right? Now, there are filters in this pool of traders, right? Those that go on to be successful, they usually suck at the beginning, um, and again, if you ever, how many of you guys have read the book Market Wizards? And this is why I don't feel bad about saying that, right? What is the one common theme about everyone except for, I think, one person in Market Wizards, right? They all were bad when they started, right? And these are the greatest traders of all time at the time. Aside from, I think, one person, right? All of them were pretty bad. So we all start off in that phase where we're bad and then, right, uh, uh, we get filtered out. Um, many quit. And go on to the, you know, and many are bad because they're looking at trading for the wrong reason to get rich quick scheme. And when they realize that it's not going to happen, they do a Google search and they find the next get rich quick scheme, right? So they go out of trading into something else. Um, many traders that suck, they, they go on to want to improve and they get better. Um, and unfortunately, they get stuck in kind of that boomer buster category where they're okay, but they're not very good. And then there's a, a small handful, right? A small percentage, a, a 10%, maybe even less than that, that go on to be successful, right? So it, it's, it, it varies. So I think it's important to, to understand first and foremost that most traders, they can have the greatest system in the world, but they're still going to lose, right? You can give them, an, and we've done this before in the past. We, get, we have given out automated systems that literally say, when this little thing comes on your screen, buy it. When this little thing comes on your screen, sell it. And traders will still find a way to lose. I think that's important to understand, right? Traders will find a way to lose, right? It's not about the strategy. And I think you guys know that by this point, right? Is it about the super secret strategy? No, it's, it's more about what's within the, the six inches between your ears. It's you, it's your brain, it's your psychology, right? That's what matters most. So no matter how simple or how complicated the strategy is, Traders will still mess it up. People will still mess it up. That's people in general. We just mess stuff up. It's kind of human nature, unfortunately. Um, so as far as a strategy goes, you can you can trade very simply. You can trade support and resistance. I, I think that's a pretty simple way to trade. You can trade something like the FTB, right? That's a pretty simple strategy, right? You can trade something maybe intermediate, right? You can trade advanced patterns. I don't think that's complicated. Um, once you learn it, some may say it's complicated. I don't think it's complicated. I don't think something like the daily chore is complicated. Um, maybe in the middle, cause there's, you know, it's more than looking at a few things. Um, but you can trade that or you can trade some sophisticated algorithm or some sophisticated moving average RSI indicator cross with 18 million filters. It doesn't really matter. Um, simple or complicated, you could be successful in trader trading. I think that's more towards the person. I, I prefer simple because uh, my brain's small, but <laughs> that's what I that's what I like. Um, so I don't I don't believe in that. That's completely false, um, and I, I can say that with confidence. One thing that is true about this statement, um, and real quick, Stephen says uh, that's one thing that I've been proud of myself is I don't change uh, is I don't change or system hope. I uh, definitely have an idea what I want to trade, but. Uh, I haven't quite gotten my process down. I've got discipline when it comes. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's going to be the most important thing in the big picture, that you're not a system hopper um, and you have discipline in what you do. Now, there is a point where the, the, the part that says your strategy needs to have something uh, separating it from others. That's debatable. Um, I, I do think we need to be different than others. Um, we need to look for slightly different things than others, not like on a, a very great notice, noticeable scale, in my opinion. But um, you need to not be like most traders. Again, if we're under the impression that most traders suck, we don't need to be making the mistakes that most traders do. And this is where we're talking about stuff like, hey, guys, let's put our stop loss one pip above here. Or like when we talk about, remember whenever we talk about overlapping levels of structure, guys? And I'm like, ah, you probably want to have your 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 stop below that second level. That's a good example of not thinking like most traders. I know it may seem like common sense to us because I preach it to you guys on a daily basis, but 
you think about those situations, most traders are going to put their stop losses like right below this level or put their targets right above this level. Um, so we do need to think slightly different than most traders. Um, we just don't kind of it's different here because we're all kind of in the same boat. Again, I think this is a much more I know this is a much more educated group. Um, but there is truth to saying that if everyone is trading the same thing, common sense is not so common. Yeah. If everything is if everybody is trading the same thing, it will lose its edge. There, there, there is truth in that. Now, the question is, how realistic is it that every trader will trade the same thing? I mean, what's the forex? It, it's you know six trillion or something crazy like that. Is there? A, how realistic is it that everyone's going to trade the exact same strategy? I don't think that's very realistic at all. Um, but there is truth to. If there's a certain if there's a certain amount of money all looking at the exact same signal, that it is going to have a negative effect on your trading. And I forgot who mentioned this early earlier. Someone said, um, "Let me scroll up." Um, I think it was Drew. Drew said, "If more people tr trade the same strategy as you do, does it not count as more volume of order in your direction?" And that's a very good comment, Drew. And you would think that. But there comes a point where it has the opposite effect. So what Drew has mentioned is basically this, like, right, well, we know that the market moves off of buying pressure and selling pressure, correct? I think all of you guys have been through the training. All of you guys have at least attended a workshop with us. Is that understood? Buying pressure versus selling pressure and, you know, the whole economic supply, demand, the rate of buying orders versus the rate of selling orders, whether it's whether you're actually buying to get in a position or buying to get out of a position, that's what makes the market move. So one would think, right, if everyone wants to buy at a certain level, that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, a massive increase in buying pressure, and that would shoot the markets up in your direction. However, there does come a point where it has an opposite effect because what it would do is it, it wouldn't allow you to get filled your position. And this is why smart money has to trade different than a retail trader. We are blessed to be retail traders. Um, because we can basically, as a retail trader, we are like, you know, a fly in a room full of giants, right? We go undetected. We can kind of do whatever we want at any given time, right? No one knows we're here. No one really cares we're here. Um, I think that's a blessing. Um, smart money, right? Institutional trading, it's different because they're trading a lot more money than us. They're trading sums of money that can actually move the market. Um, so what happens is, when you're when you're trying to put on an order of of a massive size, right? You need enough liquidity to process that order, right? If if we'll stick with simple numbers, right? If Drew wants to sell, if Drew wants to buy ten, he has to find someone that's willing to sell ten, correct? Now again, with how big the market is, is it you think it's ever hard for Drew to find someone that wants to sell ten? No, there's someone selling ten at any given time. But let's up, up the ante where Drew wants to sell or Drew wants to buy 10 million. You think it's easier or harder to find someone to find a place where someone's willing to sell 10 million to Drew? And again, we're just using just drastic numbers to kind of make an example. It's a little bit harder, right? So if Drew wants to process his full order at the same time, what he'll actually do is push the market against himself and, and put yourself in a negative position um, because it, it has to, there has to, has to find liquidity, enough liquidity to process your order, um, and, and the market will push down until it finds that liquidity. So again, it's it's kind of a it's it's a, a yes and a no answer where yeah, you need buying pressure to, you know, good en enough buying pressure would be good to push your orders up, but at the same time when initially establishing that position, it's not necessarily a good thing because you can't get it all on at the same time. So imagine if Everyone is trading the same exact strategy. Everyone's looking to buy at the same exact level because we're all just following each other. You can see how that would actually have a negative effect on the market where we wouldn't all be able to get in. There'd be some slippage that occurs because every single buy order wants to come in at that exact location and it would just be hard to find liquidity at that location. And that's why your institutional traders have to kind of wiggle their way in the market. They have to kind of buy a little bit here and then they got to sell a little bit here to try and to try and get some other people to sell with them. And then once those other people sell with them, that opens up liquidity so they can put more of their buy orders in, right? It's kind of a, a tricky game. I'm not going to pretend 
Like, I know it front and back. I've spoken to a few um, back in the day who explained it, and my brain ran out of my head. Um, if you guys remember Ale, who's on the platform with us, he spoke to uh, one as well. We were having a good conversation. And most of these guys can't actually spill the real beans. That's why they kind of, it's very vague. Most of them, you know, for reasons, I mean, this it's their secret. So <laughs> most of them can't spill the beans of how they do it. But it's, from my understanding, from what I've been told and from what I've heard from, from many traders out there that have experienced doing it, um, it's just, it's, it's a dance. It's, it's a probe. It's a probe where it's, it's, hey, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit in the opposite direction, sneak some people in here so I can really do that. Um, so real quick, uh, Cody says pound dollar is taking a great morning rant, pound taken off. Let me just switch to a pound pair real quick. I don't have any orders on the pound on my radar this morning. Uh, I don't have any pound pairs. Oh, pound Canada is on my radar. So we'll get to that. Ooh, we are taking off. What's happening on pound can on, on uh, the pound? Um, give me a second. This was going to turn into a podcast episode, but now we got this interruption. Probably still will. All right, I'll check that out in a little bit. But so that's that's my view on the question, guys. Um, so I, I I think I think simple is fine. I don't think it needs to be complex. Um, I also don't think you need to be worrying about people stealing your strategy again. It's going to take a massive amount of people. Even if you're someone, if if Cody's online saying, "Hey guys." This is how I trade this strategy. There's not going to be enough people that follow Cody to to have any influence in the market um, unless he's trading some super secret algorithm that's making like a million dollars a day. And if that's the case, Cody probably wouldn't be making that free and available on the Internet because then that would harm his own trading. Um, so I don't I don't think it, it's there's truth to it, but I don't think it's a concern just given how how small and really irrelevant we are in comparison to the bigger market. I'm watching this show called, um, what's the show? This this Great Rock or whatever it's called, The Strange Rock. And the last episode just ended talking about Earth and, and how we are a speck of water in a bigger storm, which is the universe, and how really insignificant we are. And um, yeah, my precious rock. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's kind of how we are in trading. Um, so good stuff. I thought that was worth worth the conversation. Again, it came on the Trading Coach podcast, Facebook group, and, and that's that's why I wanted to create that group to have just to allow others to really kind of experience what we're experiencing here. We have all these cool conversations every day in the live room and they don't have the luxury of doing that. So hopefully this will help them as well. All right.